Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the March 2022 meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. It will kind of be the spring. We will proceed with the uh, published agenda. Let us stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, let the record show that I, the chair, as well as commissioners Brian Gowland, David Grunning, Chad Hall, and John Pierce are present. Uh, we will proceed with the reading of the minutes from the previous meeting unless there is a motion to accept the minutes as presented and to dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third paragraph from the bottom, page one. The applicant spoke about the recent division. I, I, he was here. I don't remember his name. I think it'd be good that the minutes reflected his name. Oh, that's good. Uh, and uh, same point, the very last, under public comments, uh, Yu Berrios and then Jessica Ward Schilling asked for the presence of the developer. I know he was here, but I don't remember his name. So can you could you make those? Okay, thank you. That's it. It's a lot to keep up. So I will entertain a motion to accept the minutes with the adjustments requested. Second. All in favor? Have it. We will proceed uh, to the planning portion of the meeting, which has no agenda items. So unless there are objections, we will close the planning portion, move on to the zoning portion. The zoning portion also has no items. So we will, uh, if there are no objections, close the zoning portion and move to the public hearing. All right, the public hearing portion is now open. Uh, there is one agenda item, the proposed commercial use of the Midtown Cultural Dis District. So this is this is to allow uh, the use of this retail space for this particular use because it's not spelled out specifically as one of the allowed uses. Um, correct, correct. So what, I mean, for us to make a determination to whether or not the uses fit within the scope of the intent of the Midtown Cultural District. What exactly are they going to be doing? What I'm asking is, if I walk in a store, what am I going to expect to do or see, or uh, you know, what's what's happening? To my to my understanding of their website, it is a place where they have tables set up and people play board games, role playing games like that. So it's it's not even necessarily all electronic or anything like that. It's just a place for people to 
can't you, you go in and, and you pay X number of dollars to say, okay, I want to play a game of Monopoly or whatever it is that you want to play. Correct. Uh, this is something that not everybody is familiar with, but I'll tell you that uh, I've been playing these kinds of games since 1962. And uh, the people that I played uh, with, I'm still in contact with, the ones in college. And what that tells you is that the, the main customers uh, involved are nerdy high school and college students. But it can be all ages, and this one has, has a young set, and uh, even I go there, and I'm pretty old. Now, I if you wanted to see what these things are without buying from them, ba back in the old days, you'd have to do it mail order or you'd go to one of the hobby shops that sold model planes and stuff. But nowadays, uh, where they're sold, if you wanted to buy one around here, you'd go to uh, the Barnes & Nobles. They have a, a section. So it's like you would cut out a little chunk of Barnes and & Nobles and, and put it in our little retail area is, is what's happened. The other... The other one is, again, second in, uh, second in shawls. So essentially, this is a bookshop type deal. And uh, they don't charge, by the way, for playing the games. They, they charge for selling them if you like the game and decide to take, take one home with you. Um, so it, this would fall under the bookshops, uh, which is one of the permitted uses. Uh, but you just, it isn't spelled out that way because nobody thought of a game shop at the time. But uh, I hope we do can consider it as such. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So can we make a motion for this? And then do it in the um, – do it in order. So Any, anything else that we – I'm, to discuss I'm, I'm about it? I have a question. I'm slow at this. I'm looking for bookshops here. Which, which number is it? There's 41. There's 40 White Island. Stationary bookstores. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I, I mean, as an opinion, I don't see where that's inconsistent or, you know, to have any detrimental or deleterious effect on commercial activity in that little strip. I mean, if somebody goes in and plays a board game, uh, I don't see why that would be inconsistent with, you know, a pistol, a, uh, you know, I mean, it's not specific, you know, but right. once again, in our zoning code, we do have a provision that if the use is uh, similar in nature, listed uses, then you can give it permission. With the understanding that is that we've given them per permission, and the reason I ask the question is if we approve it based on the information you're saying, these, this is the way the business is going to be conducted, uh, then that uh, obligates them to not step beyond that. We can have the business that, you know, you can open up a game room and all of a sudden have a live beer and sell beer. Correct. That's better than what you have here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but for that particular business, because you then have to go to the particular hobby shop. This is, uh, I'm Lynn Condemi. I live in the in the area for many years, been on the historic commission. Um, my thing is, the same issue is that it doesn't go into something else. I think that the that the people that are asking for this maybe could have come to the meeting so they could explain, and then we could let them know that it can't move outside of that because we only have bookstores. In my opinion, this isn't a bookstore. It's kind of elevated. <laughs> We're gonna let you answer that one. <laughs> 
Okay, now you're doing your seven up. But, but I think that um, I just didn't know that they didn't get, get to the meat. Any other huh? discussion? question. If they decide to sell a t-shirt associated with the game, retail or clothing, do they have to come back to us or can they simply do it because it's on their website? Well, they make a retail clothing sale. They haven't told the commission that they wanted to do that. They do that. Do they have to come back to us? for approval to do that? It's under, under number 26, That's for example. That's a separate, specific group. Right, I'm just saying with, since it's. This is difficult, this is really difficult. If you want to speak, you have to, I'm sorry, you have to come to the microphone, otherwise they can't hear you on the internet. Um, May I add a couple of points of information about the store? It, it's a store that has all the, facil uh, the facets of the game. So they also sell books because some, uh, there are rules of books and some games are almost entirely selling lots of books. They also sell a little, what you might think of as a miniature soldier. And they sell, uh, they do sell, if not t-shirts, they sell cosplay. Uh, cosplay is another modern, uh, aspect of gaming and that involves clothing. So they sell little costume accessories. Uh, if you want elf ears, that's a place in town to go buy them. And so it, 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 don't expect them to just sell just, just Monopoly sets, which they don't sell, uh, but it's games and all the uh, gaming paraphernalia uh, uh, that you might expect to find. I think, I think we're over talking this. I, I think this is probably about as innocuous a use as you could <laughs> entertain at that location. I don't, we're beating it to death. I move that we conclude the public hearing. All right. A uh, motion is on the floor to conclude the public hearing. Second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, guys, have it. The public hearing is closed. We will move on to the discussion portion. Uh, now, uh, the discussion. I will remind everyone that the discussion is an opportunity for comment uh, by the commission on, on a subject. I would like to clarify for those attending that the proposed amendments to the town ordinances we will discuss are not enacted by this commission. Uh, this commission does not pass, amend, or eliminate ordinances. Uh, in this case, we advise the town council by our recommendation, which could be in general in support of something, in opposition of something. That's the next one. We're not doing the, the rest of the public hearing part? Discussion. Oh, my, my fault. You're right. <laughs> I moved to the discussion rather than the public hearing. My fault. Sorry. Um, well, just keep all that in mind when I get to the, uh, to the discussion part. My apologies. Uh, can't read my own writing here. Okay, so, sorry. Public hearing on the uh, proposed commercial use of the Midtown Cultural District. Um, so do we have a, I will entertain a motion to approve the, um, the a uh, application of the game shop as uh, as it is presented in it in the application, move to approve the use. I have a question before we do. May we can we discuss yeah. it amongst ourselves? Well, got to have a second, huh? Yeah, I mean, but I, mo I made a motion that we approve the use. Yeah, we get, if we get a second, then we can have a discussion. Yeah. Yep. Second motion. All right, we have a second. 
Now, uh, 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 David, uh, ask your question. Go ahead. So, in order to avoid the problem of a you know single sale of a T-shirt or something like that, incidental to the gaming store, the game, pardon me, the um, retail board game store. Do we? So, in other words, when we do we simply approve the request? Or do, can we frame the, dis, the decision of the commission in such a way that make clear what we think we're doing and not simply approve the request as such? Because I think it would be best to say, yes, we approve the store and other incidental activities, not just, not just, um, I, well, I suppose. So until we, until the meeting, this meeting occurred, I didn't know that they were going to sell board games. I thought it was going to be what you thought it was going to be, that you would actually like pay a, a, a little, a small fee to play games with folks. Well, is if I if I understand it correctly, they they are allowed to do anything that's already covered. That's related the to the game. Right. So they can they can they could do anything that's that's uh, enumerated on there. We're approving them to do the thing that's not enumerated on there. Yeah, you, you, we got we got some game. If you like playing this game, you can buy a copy and bring it home and play it. Here's what I think. I don't I don't see why that's. No, here's what I think. I think what we, I think what the commission needs to do. What makes sense to me is to say this fits under number nine. Stationery and bookstore. It's closely enough related to that. that we're not inventing a new category. Well, we would, would we be, we wouldn't be in uh, creating a new category, would we? We would just be allowing this one business. They don't need permission to sell a T-shirt. They can sell T-shirts. Right. Right. Because they, the application is to run a, a retail board game store. So, so your idea is that the, the selling of other paraphernalia. Once again, no clothing stores in allowable use. Right. Right. They're not applying. There's, there's to, nothing there that's not an allowable. They are not use. applying to open a retail clothing store. They're, They're applying. Apply. What are they applying to do? They're applying to. Do, this is what I understand. They're applying to do number nine. So we have to. We have to say our interpretation of number nine is it includes a board game, retail board game store. That's. I'm perfectly happy to do that. I'd also like our, our decision to say that includes selling other paraphernalia, you know, little figurines, things like, you know, other things that are associated with selling board games. Just to make, just to make it a little no, easier. To, it, to play a board game or related activities. To the board games. They don't only Brian, they only derive an income by selling board games. They don't they don't rent you a seat. They don't what? They don't rent you the seat. They let you play for free, so you'll buy the game. So it's a very simple part of this. I think the application in front of us is really asking does a retail board game fit a permitted use? And if we say it does on item nine, there's a number of other permitted uses. But it says on a commercial. Sorry. Yeah, we'd, we'd offer fun family uh, entertainment by selling educational as well as historical gaming for all ages. Uh, family environments. And so, I mean, okay, whatever. I, I, I would like to us to move ahead and approve it. Yeah, I don't see the need for additional restrictions beyond that because they're already in place, right? Well, it says what they're going to do. Right. Yeah. Yes, we we are approving exactly what it says on their Which written application. written down on this piece of paper. Yep. A retail board game store. So. For Um, they're already established as they're already 
All right, so we have a. Uh, we we have a, a motion and a second. I call for a question on a motion. Say again. Question. Question. Yeah, meaning let's vote on it. Yes. All right. <laughs> so uh, all in, all in favor of approving. Aye. All right, so we will now close the public hearing portion uh, and move on to the discussion, which is what I was talking about before. Uh, <laughs> so again, what we're doing for this discussion part is deciding upon our recommendation to the town council in, in support, opposition, or we can forward it to them with no comment whatsoever. Right. When I make your recommendation to the council, but it's whether or not at the end of this you direct staff to go ahead and schedule a public hearing. Yes. Which in the end we don't we don't pass that anyway. Right. right. The ordinance would be changed by the town council, which is yeah, what I'm getting at. Is there a recommendation? Right. We would make a recommendation. They can but we take satisfy, it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah, they they don't uh, they don't have to listen to us at all. But they usually do right. but in, in doing that we satisfy the need for the town to have a public hearing. Because Correct. Because we're conducting a public hearing. Correct. Correct. So we'll pull up the first one, the jurisdiction one. So the, um, the underlined would be the additional things, and the line through would be the things that would be taken out. Is this property, hadn't it been like recently annexed? Or was it already in the town? It's been in the town for, for a while. It's, it's, it's okay, a so basically you're just asking us to include that property in an overlay district. Yeah, and then we're also include if there was, if there was any uh, further annexations going down Harrison that came into this, the town, those would also be Oh, so automatically. That, that, would, that would designate that any yeah. future additions on that corridor would be part of the commercial overlay. Treating Harrison just like the highway corridor. Not yeah. Historic. 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 Well, the historic district would have purview, but it would also, uh, with the first 150 feet, would be. No, we're, not, we're, not, we're, we're just talking about the jurisdiction of buildings built on Harrison and whether or not the historic commission reviews those. That's all we're talking about. Oh, okay. So, so you're not, why are you, why? Like that. No. So no, no zoning. That's the next one. Okay. Right. Mark, let me ask you this. The development, which is the Oxman Clinic, yeah. this isn't going to retroactively apply because that building is already designed. It's It's been bid. They're ready to move forward. So this isn't going to retroactively go to the, the Oxman facility, right? Well, typically, until a building permit is submitted, the, the energy is going to Right, you have to have a permit in place. Yeah. And the Historic District Commission would then have purview if the area is zoned 
if the historic commission has purview over it or of the town council right. well. but that wouldn't be part of the uh, corridor thing where you have uh, 150 feet no, of that's a different we're apples and oranges well I know one's historic district but the other one is that all the major highways coming into town have that commercial overlay would that automatically apply to that area? No, this has nothing to do with that applying a commercial overlay. This just has to do with where the historic commission has jurisdiction to review applications for building. Well, I know the difference between the two. I'm just asking why isn't that being included? Because we aren't, we aren't rezoning any properties there. That property is not in that overlay. It's got commercial zoning? The zoning is not related to whether it's commercial. It's what? <laughs> the, the zoning is unrelated to whether it's historic or not. I know that. But I'm asking the next question. Is that going to fall? You know, we can approve the historic district purview over the property. But the question I'm asking is, would it also, in addition to this, not something that we have to decide, become part of the commercial overlay? It says no. it's a car to come no. into town. No, it would not. The answer is no. Okay, no. Well, then, when you, the property is in town, so it's commercially zoned? It's zoned commercially. Okay, that was the question. Okay. Thank you. So can we uh, vote on that now? So at this point, I think you would, you would, if you want to move this to a public hearing, which would be in a month, right. then you would make a motion to that effect, second, approve it, and then that gives staff the direction to go ahead and prepare notice. And okay. Any other, any other comments by the commission? All right, I'll entertain a motion to move that forward. I do. Second. Second. So move. All right, I'll, uh, he second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. All right, the second amendment is to the residential overlay district. Right. So these amendments will do two things. Currently, yeah, and I'm going to go to the map here in just a minute. We'll get the map up and I'll show you where the, the overlay is. Well, I just talk loud. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you were um, talking loud. I just Fine. always talk loud. Um, and then it would it would um, um, add restaurants and cafes as a permitted use. So why don't we? Let's see. Brian's not here. He, he had had he had asked me a question yesterday about um, looking at the map. So why don't we go to the GIS and I'll show folks where the this is located. Our map is still a little bit of a work in progress, so I'm going to have to point some spots where things aren't quite showing up right. Um, okay. Um, let's see what I can do here. Can I do this? Okay, well, let me to kind of acquaint everybody with where we're at. This is. Um, Walgreens auto zone area right here on there we go I'm gonna let you work the GIS okay. <laughs> okay. we'll tag team this I'll do the Vanna White and you do the other okay so okay so what we have is from Harrison okay that's okay <laughs> I wrote this down if I get it right okay so on highway 59 the overlay corridor 
is <coughs> extends from Harrison Avenue I, yeah, I can see that. Okay. So, our, like I said, our map still needs some work. What we're looking at here is this, this green hatch pattern. Okay? So, from Harrison on either side of the, of the street, it goes up 100. That, that wasn't, was that me? Yeah, a little bit, but it's okay. Okay. Don't touch it. Yeah, I know. I'm really trying hard not to. Five feet away. Yeah. Okay. So, we go from Harrison side of 59. We go north to, on the west side, Heinz Street. Here's Harrison. Don't touch it. And on, on the east side of the street, uh, 150 feet back, the overlay extends 150 feet back, which is half of a normal town block is 150 feet. It goes from Harrison up to 9th. And then on the west side, it goes from Harrison to Hines Street, which is right across the street from 9th. So up here, so 150 feet on either side. Now, let's go up a little bit and then let, let me kind of reacquaint everybody. Here's 59 when you come around into town, there's the traffic circle. Mm -hmm. And then there was an area that was at a later date, kind of in the neighborhood where we are right now. Um, again, the green hatch pattern is the overlay. So it started with Highway 36 and then later there were several ordinances that were adopted that changed both this area and the area here. And I gave you all a map of this at your, the commissioners, and the property I circled is where we are right now, the town hall. So the property across the street, that side of the street, is in the residential commercial overlay zone. The overlay zone does not have a stated purpose. A lot of times when communities write zones, there's a the purpose. I think what I read into that is the purpose of this zone is it's located over primarily residential properties, and it allows for a limited number of kind of small scale um, retail uses um, and with limited hours of operation. So in other words, it allows some commercial development within a neighborhood, but you're not gonna get Costco next door. That's the goal, okay. That's, and that's kind of my interpretation of that. Don't, that's not official. And if we go out, so it comes down, it's in this neighborhood here, downtown and then it comes down in a 150 foot strip and then the strip goes to about 300 feet here because that was a different ordinance and then it's about 300 feet down here so it's basically overlying these uh, residential zone properties and allowing them some some limited commercial opportunities and then if we go up let's look at 435 so that's just the south side of 36 right yes okay yeah just the south side so if we go out 435, it goes, here is Main Street, let's see, Main, and then this is the, where are we at, there, there's, there, okay, here's the church. So it comes from down here and goes all the way up to Allen Road, okay? Now there's some commercial, highway commercial property up here in the, where the quail farm is. This is Fabielli's, this little thing I'm pointing at here. Uh, let me go to the east side real quick. So on the east side, it goes from down across from the um, uh, church, 150 feet, and it goes up to Brook Forest Road. So when you see the, yeah, the area I think where the dentist office is and such, that's in that, I hope. Um, so those are, those are the areas of town where the overlay zone is applied. Primarily along the highway corridors, but there's also this kind of core area downtown. Does that help with any questions? Yeah. Mark, is the church 
at the corner of Main and 435, is that in this zone? Well, 150 feet of it is, so about half the building is. From so, and, and the way the rules work, it doesn't extend across, the, I mean, it's limited to that. What, what area were you referring to? Talking about the church at the corner, the big church, 435. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. by the post office. Yeah, by the post office. 150 feet back from the edge of the highway is in the overlay zone. But that, where does it stop along 435? Because 435 actually, Main Street is part of 435, right? It goes, it it ends, I think it's the property just south of, it goes to here. Okay. Yeah. And then on the, it's on this side too. So, so here it goes along both sides. On this side it stops at Brook Forest. This one continues up to, to the west side of Allen Road. Gotcha. That makes sense. So, all right, I'm going to I'm going to split this up into two different parts because what's proposed are two two uh, two different changes. One is to allow in this zone restaurants or cafes. So I want to discuss that first. So you're one. expanding the allowable uses, correct, as well as the hours of operation. Okay, those are the two parts. Correct, yeah, but I wanted to tackle the restaurant and ca or cafe first. In the commercial overlay zone. Correct. Well, that's interesting because we had a little restaurant in the commercial overlay zone on Highway 59, uh, where the uh, Full Moon Garden Center is. They had a, a they had a little restaurant in there, a Brazilian restaurant. And, and uh, it was, yeah, it operated for a while. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, but they didn't have the late hours. I think they closed at 7. Well, right. Yeah, that, uh, I know, because I dined there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a prohibited use. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the intent of establishing that zone, the name of it is uh, Neighborhood Commercial. Right. And so the uses are supposed to be consistent with uh, that if somebody has a house next door to it, that their peace and serenity within their domicile wouldn't be disrupted by the business activity taking place next door to them. Correct. So that's the intent. So the question at hand is, would have a cafe or a restaurant cause a problem for somebody in their house? Yeah. And if it's open to what, eight? Did you say what the hours was about? Well, all right, so it, it would be, I, which that's something that I think would have to be addressed. If we're, if we're moving this to nine, which is what's the other change is being requested. I mean, I'm interpreting that as, well, that doesn't mean you can close the restaurant at nine and then carry on cleaning it up and doing all of that kind of stuff all the way till 10 or 11. You'd yeah. have to say, you'd have to close in enough time to where you are done and locked up, lights off, gone by nine. Right. Uh, business may be conducted, it's kind of vague. It, it is. That says open for business to me, not. Right, instead of, right, but if I'm, if I'm living next door to that, and there's people still, you know, uh, cleaning and, and so forth and, and talking and doing all this stuff, you know, out there at 10 o'clock at night, it sure doesn't feel like it went to 9 o'clock. Yeah, no, the two things that come in the restaurant. Right. Dumpsters, grease traps. Yep. It's uh, and I've worked smell. in a restaurant before, it takes, it takes, it takes a while to shut it down. Yeah, and, and so with expanding that use, uh, we could possibly uh, discuss limitations of the use of a restaurant or a small cafe. Well, I, and I think right now what we're trying to tackle is do we want to move this to a public hearing? so that we could get feedback from the public, discuss all of those things that you just said, Brian, yeah. and then figure out do we want to, what do we want to recommend to the town council regarding okay. this. So right now, currently, if we did not expand the allowable uses, 
and an applicant wanted to come forward with an idea for a restaurant and they had a large enough property and they could show an application that didn't disrupt the peace and serenity of neighbors, they correct. could still come for an exception use case with a public hearing, correct? Yeah, you want to limit the, for example, number of tickets, no, but that's another use. That condition. would be to discuss at the public hearing. I mean, it's worth discussion. I have a question for the staff. Question for the staff. Have you received inquiries from people who want to open a restaurant or cafe? I have. I just received direction to prepare these amendments. Okay, or received a proposal. But, I mean, it wasn't possible before, so it was not intended. So they were curious. They wanted to know about it. Okay. Okay. second half um, we have to recognize as well that if we change those hours that's not just a change of hours for restaurants or cafes every business. that would be everybody exactly everywhere in that in that uh, it would be every business there you know and so that's uh and, and maybe nine o'clock might you know we might want to discuss do we want to go to nine how about eight you know or yeah. something like well, if you, remember cafe couple, closed at 8 if you remember a couple of years ago, we allowed the snowball stands there until late. Oh, the okay. Yeah. Um, so. And the Pablitos, when they sell Christmas trees? Right. We did that, too. What? Oh, Christmas, Christmas trees? trees? Yeah, people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah we'd, have to, we'd have to recognize that this would be a change over the whole zone. Yeah. And for every, everybody that's running something commercial. That's correct. In the uh, neighborhood commercial zone, yeah. Right. So uh, when we discuss it, we need to focus on if we want somebody to open up a little cafe or a restaurant in there, we need to think about defining it in such a way that it doesn't disturb somebody's lifestyle. Of course. And I think we need to maintain that focus uh, of what is the purpose of neighborhood commercial. Right. And so if we do that, then that would be another consideration. But I think it's worth discussion. I move that we, uh, that we uh, recommend uh, that we uh, hold a public hearing on both of these issues next month. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Hello, my name is Robert Foss. I live in Southwind Subdivision of Catch Place. Uh, we're talking about the Dollar General project, correct? In the notes it said three minutes, but I'm not gonna argue. I'll try to make it quick. Um, the water and the proposed spot for that, how is it gonna affect the flood insurance? The ditches that run all behind the right side of Southwind there's a ditch that runs behind there. It runs through my property across South Street and then eventually into the Abita River, eventually. I've been lived that house over 20 years. I put several thousand dollars worth of dirt in my property because every time a hard rain come, I had a lake in my yard. Um, so um, the people on the other side of 59, I'm actually worried about them more so than me because the water that comes from that building is going to drain before the building, the water on the other side of 59, where it comes underneath 59. And um, I'm suggesting maybe um, they should have a retention pond like they did up there for that car clinic place and slowly let the water out eventually, like the Superdome. You know, but this is not the Superdome, but still. Um, I think that needs to be addressed, a, a, tension, a retention pond or something that's not gonna, you know, have the Metairie effect parking lot effect in, well, y'all know if y'all from New Orleans, anyway. But anyway, that, um, and how is it gonna affect uh, flood insurance? I know y'all not, and I'm looking for answers and I stand corrected, I'm sorry. Um, and then the two pipes that go underneath South Street are 60 inch pipes, there's two of them. Um, they should be have more. So the water can run through the um, underneath South Street in order to um, go into the Abita River eventually. Um, at that property line of where those pipes go under, this side is Abita, the other side is St. Tammany Parish, the limits. You know, y'all property limits, you know, draw that line. This is so big. And then, um, all right, that was, uh, that was your two minutes. All right, I'm sorry. And uh, I'd just like to note the next time y'all have a meeting, this posting an hour before, you know, that ain't going to get it. Y'all need to post it at least 30 minutes. I know last week we had the tornadoes. You know, I don't wish that on anybody, but um, y'all need to give the public more notice. Again, Lynn Congemi, living in the area, again, for 25 years, and I'm very familiar with the residential commercial overlay district. I would say that changing right now from 7 a.m., or what, 7 to 7, I'm going to say that I wanted to stay at 7 to 7, even for restaurants. We have a lot of commercial property, and that overlay runs from Harrison and it's the big issue coming up, the Dollar General. <laughs> the Dollar General will fall in, I think, to the commercial district. I would like to, one, have more public meetings about that, so we, we're putting out this particular meeting to ask public opinion for the seven to seven, and not seven to nine, because I think you, the committee is right. There's a lot of, how do you clean up afterwards? We have a lot of our community is residential. We are not a commercial uh, historic district from Harrison all the way out to Money Hill. But I do want to say that we've always been a community that uh, does not embrace big development. And I think we have something coming and we all have to be aware 
of this seven o'clock to seven o'clock is important, and the setbacks are important. Dollar General's not on this, um, um, this um, agenda, but we have runoffs in ditches, ditches that already don't supply for runoff here on the corridor between Milner and Southwind. Um, we have lighting ordinances that are on the Historic Commission. I don't think Historic is the only people that have a say for what happens. Maybe they do. I know there's zoning for commercial, but I think that citizens, we have developed this town to have harmony for our residents. And um, let's see, traffic congestion. I think there should be a third lane somewhere between that corridor of south wind uh, up to where the circle is. And I know this isn't the place, I realize this isn't the place to discuss this, but we have not really had since March 15th historic district, we haven't had any public or nobody even knows this is going on. And I don't want to know it from Facebook. I want to know it from my councilman. I want to know it from my planning and from my historic. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Next. <laughs> Can I also a point of information? Can he, just a point of information. The, uh, I want everybody, you know, we're talking about the Dollar General. That is not part of the uh, overlay. The Dollar General is, that property is, Straight out commercial. So okay, I just wanted that. Not yeah, I, I'm Stuart Eastman, just to remind you, and, and I live here in town on um, Maple Street. Um, the only way, I, I'm also opposed to the Dollar General. It might be too late because it is commercial, but on the other hand, maybe they don't have their business license yet or such like. The only way to really stop them is to change what are the permitted uses are in the commercial district. And looking at the list of commercial district uses, it, there, there's a, at least a dozen of them that are obsolete or really shouldn't be there. And there are at least a dozen that I could think of off the top of my head uh, and have listed on that paper that should be there, uh, just more modern types of stores. Um, the one that is most crucial for stopping the data general would be to get rid of variety store. We don't need a variety store or more of them in the commercial districts. We have a very small commercial district. But if we did need one, you can always apply for an exception. Uh, so if we could get that out of there, then if someone did want uh, a variety store or any of the other things that I recommend we, we take out, then they can apply for a variance. And since there hasn't been one uh, in years and years, uh, it's not like you'd have a, a, a burdensome number of variances to deal with. It's, this is a once in a, a once in many years type of thing, usually. But as long as those, uh, as long as the commercial district allows it, you're stuck, and uh, the public is stuck. So uh, please, I'd like you to put this on your agenda uh, to record to discuss each of the individual changes I'm, I'm, I'm recommending, and uh, to consider it as soon as you can, and to pass it on uh, to the town council and the mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Go right ahead. Uh, good evening, my name is Monica Gomez, and I am here to urge the Planning and Zoning Commission and the residents to please take a deeper look into the reasons that many cities such as Birmingham, Tulsa, Kansas City, uh, Cleveland, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Atlanta, and New Orleans uh, have either passed or are considering passing restrictions on the spread of dollar stores, including Dollar General, Dollar Family Dollar, and the Dollar Store. There was a report published uh, by the Institute for Self-Reliance that stated that there's a growing evidence that these stores are not merely a byproduct of economic distress, they're a cause of it. I believe dollar chains are a threat to local grocers because they can take advantage of huge savings 
by, by buying enormous quantities at discounted prices. Um, sorry, I lost my spot. They're able to offer lower prices than local grocers. Oh, I said that already. Uh, this has created food deserts in many communities, communities in which dollar stores are the only places to buy food, which is often high in calories and low in nutrition. The project has a potential to have a long-term negative impact on our community and lower income communities in particular. I'm requesting that the board please advocate for the town and to consider suggestions such as the ones um, that our residents have uh, given already uh, to have the project postponed until further discussion and re request that this be added to the agenda for upcoming meetings uh, to be dis discussed by the board and the residents of the town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sharon Wood, and I would like you to know that I live on Bryan Street, and that's far too close to a store that size. But work begins June this year, which is what, two months? And it will probably be completed in October of this year. Seeing no further uh, people wanting to comment, I'm going to close the comment portion, um, and we will now hear any announcements. Uh, I would like to make an announcement. Uh, thank you for coming up, talking. Please uh, relate all of this to your alderman, um, because again, we're we're not we're not your elected officials. They are. I, I will be doing the same thing that, that you can do, which is reaching out to them, uh, because they're the ones who are supposed to. That's what I mean. Yeah, you're all. Um, seeing no other business to be conducted, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. And second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thank you all for coming. This is an overwhelming.